Guys, Platinum released the full skill set for the May Fusion Champion. Now, we can currently vote for the A3, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to be able to see every single skill, which will really, really help us understand what, uh, what the best version of the champion will be, honestly. And they are pretty interesting. I'm not disappointed with any of them. I'll be very honest. They're actually pretty... Pretty good options, you know. Let me just quickly bring them on the screen for you. So there we go. May Fusion Skills Vote. This is Stage 3, the default skill. So uh, this is not going to happen just yet. We're going to have Stage 2 and then Stage 3, which will be this one. The Damage Focus uh, version attacks one enemy two times, has a 25% chance of granting an extra turn. Not a bad skill, but again, uh, I feel like the damage, the damage dealer is... Not a safe bet, because if they will have bad multipliers, we're all going to be like, no, we fused this champion, why? We voted for him, why? You know? So that's one of the main reasons why I would recommend pretty much not to vote on him. But then they can surprise us with very good multipliers and we'll be like, damn, this was actually really solid, you know? It could have been something. But I feel like it's a risk that we gotta take. Then, the defense focus one, which by the way seems to be the winning, uh, the winning one for the A3. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. If the target is a boss, the chance increases to 80%. Fully booked probably will be a 100% chance, which already makes him great for the Head of Decay in the Hydra Clan boss as a provoker. Very, very nice. Then you have the support focus. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns which is not bad as well. You have a, a chance to land poison. So that will be the basic skill for, uh, for the fusion. If we are actually moving over to the second option, which is the uh, A2, and this is stage two of the voting, which will happen in like four days, if I'm not mistaken. The damage focus one. Attacks all enemies. Before attacking, places an increased attack buff on this champion for two turns. The damage inflicted with this skill increases by five, for each buff on the target. Now, this one so far sounds really good. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, if we're going to hit stone skin and all the rest of the buffs, it's not really going to be very helpful. But overall, it doesn't sound bad. Now, if the multiplier is only a 4.0, like a Supreme Alhane, for example, it's not going to be great for the AoE. It's conditional. They need to have buffs, which again, is not a problem. They do have buffs in the current meta. So it's kind of like a win-win. The problem is that strengthen shield etc will basically bring in a lot of damage reduction now if the target has no buffs this skill will ignore 25 percent of the target's defense i feel like this would have been better in the following way if the target has two or more buffs this will ignore 25 percent of the target's defense and it would have been a better skill you know but again it's all about multipliers is a it's very risky to, <laughs> to try and vote just for the damage. The defense focus one attacks all enemies, has a chance of placing a decreased attack for two turns, also increases the duration of all buffs by one turn on the allies. So already this is a very strong skill and it just seems like uh, the defense focus one is really, really solid all around. Then increases the value of all shield on all allies. The value of each shield is increased proportional to the total number of buffs which had their duration increased. Now, this can actually be very, very, very nasty because you're going to uh, have a lot of buffs if you're planning to use him in Hydra. And I know the Corporal and Cadaver team is dead right now with Brockney, uh, so it's not as relevant for it. But overall, it's still a, a interesting thing. Maybe something else will come in the future that would potentially do some crazy things with uh, the value of the shield. So this. I think is a very solid skill. Increases the duration of buffs, decrease attack AoE, uh, deals damage, and on top of it, you increase the value of the shield. I think is a, is a very nice one. Then for the support focus one. Attacks all enemies. Has a chance of placing a poison sensitivity debuff for two turns, then instantly activates any poison debuffs on all enemies and heals all allies by 20% of this champion's max HP. This is actually a nice one. It's basically activating the poisons like Theodore does. So it's not, uh, it's not like a full poison detonation, I think, because um, that is worded a bit differently and they tend to work a bit different. But 
it might be something very similar with what uh, uh, Elena Rila and Xavier does, just kind of like under a different uh, different text, you know, which can be nice. I feel like Poison is really not that um, that great anymore. It's not uh, as impactful as uh, it used to be back in the day on uh, on the dungeon bosses. Maybe they will change something and Poison will become again more relevant. But as it is, HP burn is definitely way, way better. Still, it's not a bad skill to have, you know. Uh, detonate the poisons, get some healing, poison sensitivity. So I'm actually liking this. Now, they've made initially a mistake, guys, and uh, it showed that the poisons was 15% poison. That was just a typo. It's a 5% poison. We don't have 15% poisons in-game, okay? Then, stage 1, which is the skill 3. I've already voted for this myself. Damage focus, attacks an enemy, will ignore stone skin. Pretty interesting. But again, it's all about multipliers. Uh, I find it pretty hard to uh, smash a UDK with him. Not ignoring defense, not ignoring strength, not ignoring shield, you know. So that kind of like puts me off with the damage focus. The second uh, part, the defense focus, brings a brand new buff to the, to the table that will counter all the crowd control in the game. Bosses, uh, pretty much everything. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, bosses or not. So even for Hydra, you're not going to get uh, the true fear or the fear on this uh, champion that has the buff. So overall, it's very impactful. You have increased defense. You have a shield as well. Then with the other skill, he gives, uh, gives you the uh, decreased attack and he increases the value of the shield. So you have, a, you have a solid defense champion. I feel like he's a very safe, safe bet. Now, the support revives all that allies with HP and uh, Thermometer. Places poison uh, debuffs on all enemies for two turns. The number of poison debuffs placed on each target is equal to the number of allies revived. So, in order to really make the most out of this champion, you really need to bring in um, other poisoners. I've seen some comments saying, it's going to be great to solo golem and stuff. I mean, poison is irrelevant on hard mode. Everybody should farm hard mode that are able to do it because you want to get better gear. So, you shouldn't get stuck on the lower stages just because you're soloing. It's just waste of energy while you're basically limiting your uh, good gear. So the main priority is for dungeons should only be the highest possible stage to get the highest, the best possible gear. So uh, that should be the priority rather than soloing uh, content just for the sake of it to get some fodders done and basically handicap yourself uh, and not get better gear. So this is, uh, again, the defense... Uh, in my opinion, is the is the most interesting uh, interesting one, especially bringing a new a new buff. Then we have the stage four, the passive skill. So for the damage focus prevents this champion's death and keeps them alive on one HP one hit with a fatal hit. Then counter attacks. So when you counter attack, you counter attack with the basic skill. Keep that in mind. If the counter attack kills the attacker, fully heals this champion. Okay, interesting. Uh, you think if you get smacked by a Taras or by a stronger champion, uh, you're going to be able to uh, to kill him? Probably not. Even a UDK can smack you and uh, basically put his champion on 1 HP, then he's going to attack UDK. UDK is barely going to uh, get any damage from the basic skill. And the problem is that if the counterattack doesn't kill the attacker, kills this champion instead. You know, So it's not going to go uh, very good if you're not able to kill somebody and then you're still going to have to revive. So it's not the best passive, you know. Then the defense focus one. At the start of each round, places a counter-attack buff on this champion for one turn. This buff cannot be removed. Now he's going to be amazing for the mischief target in Hydra, guys. You're going to get decreased attack. You're going to get shield. You're going to get increased defense. You're going to get the new buff that will basically make your champions immune to crowd control. And with the A1, you're going to get a provoke. Duh, and not just for the Hydra. It's going to be great for a lot of content. At the end of this champion's turn, places a counterattack buff on them for one turn. So that counterattack will never disappear. Okay? Very, very strong passive. I'm actually a fan of it because it cannot be removed. So you don't have to worry about the mischief stealing it. But at the same time, the mischief We'll still want to get a piece of this uh, increase uh, of this uh, counter attack. Sorry. So very very nice. Then I do like this support focus skill. Man, uh, is actually a very nice one. Allies deal five percent more damage for each poison debuff on the target, stacking up to thirty percent. And this doesn't need to be applied by the champion. 
So this is uh, actually quite uh, quite a good uh, quite a good skill. You know, you're not really gonna get buffs from this champion to uh, basically use it on a protection set and gain more damage. So your thirty percent will kind of be like the cap, similar with Gurpturk, similar of course with uh, Feral. But either way, is a nice uh, is a nice passive to deal extra damage. So it is orientated more towards uh, progression and stuff like this, but it's Overall, I'll be honest. Overall, in my opinion, the damage focus one is the weakest out of the out of the three of them. Uh, especially that uh, is the most risky one if the multipliers are not going to be good. But the support and the defense is definitely a, a nice uh, a nice touch. I personally prefer the defense focus. It just seems like every single skill is very nice. It's going to be very very useful for the uh, entire. Uh, entire uh, career in Raid Shadow Legends, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, if you're early game, mid game, late game, he's going to be a massive powerhouse for uh, for everybody, you know, and I think uh, I think he's definitely a solid one. And by the way, off topic now, I absolutely love the idea of us voting the skills for a fusion champion. I am hoping that they will do this in the future another million times is absolutely amazing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about it? Do you guys uh, uh, think it's a great idea to be able to vote for uh, for skills like this and kind of like uh, try to pick what we need uh, the most? What's the most unique and powerful uh, powerful thing on uh, on the champion? That was all for the video, guys. Appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.